either within here. Uh, as you all know, you may have referred to my website for study materials uh, with respect to economics or business studies. Right? Now, some students requested me to help them out on one particular topic and I wasn't really sure how I could go about to it since I've already run out of classes. So, let's talk about one tiny topic. Since this being my first video, I'll keep it as short as possible. That being rural credit, which happens to be a concept in your first PUC economics. Okay, now you could expect a five mark question on this topic. Alright, so it's quite easy actually. And there are some basic points which you must remember which I'll run you through during the course of the video. So bear with me. Firstly, just remember the word credit. Now credit just means loans. Alright? Now when a bank says that they're willing to give you credit or extend your credit, it means that they're willing to give you a loan or extend the amount of loan that they've given to you by a few thousand rupees or a few lakh rupees. Alright? Now, the similar thing is what you must consider from rural India's perspective. Now, remember, most of India still is in its villages, alright? And the people there don't really make a large amount of money. So, usually, rural credit is usually money which they would take or loans which they would take for the sake of doing agriculture work, alright? Now, this is where it gets complicated. The problem with rural credit is there is a lack of organization in the way in which it is given and in the way in which it operates. The people who go about giving rural credit are pawn brokers or indigenous money lenders. Okay, indigenous money lenders could be landlords or loan sharks, all that. Okay, pawn brokers are a type of money lenders, in fact, or indigenous money lenders as you would call them. Now, what's the problem in getting a loan from them? Now, remember that when you go about taking loan from people who come from the unorganized market, there is no regulation on the way in which they are supposed to be structured. Now, when you go to a bank for a regular loan, they go about telling you what should be the monthly interest rate or monthly installments. They go about telling you what should be the uh, interest rate that you need to pay, what is the maturity of the loan. All the details are clearly given to you. Now, that's not possible with an indigenous money lender. Uh, this guy could go about giving you any amount of money without really defining the terms and conditions properly. Now, even if he gives you this doc, uh, this loan by having you sign a document, the problem with rural India is a large number of people there are illiterates. Now, if you know, Indian statistics, when it comes to illiteracy, only considers their signature capacity, not really whether they can read or write in a particular language and if they can do it fluently. So these people end up getting into some severe debts because they've taken loan from people whom they can't really trust and their terms and conditions are ridiculously flexible. Now to solve that problem, Government of India has introduced certain measures up to an extent. Alright? Now what are those measures which they have introduced up to an extent? Firstly, there is an extent in the number of banking functions that has been deployed in the rural area. We have more banks today in rural areas than ever before, okay? Now, what are these banks doing? Firstly, when it comes to giving loans, they've taken up microfinancing. Now, microfinancing is an important part of rural credit because rather than giving you a large amount of loan immediately, they go about giving you a small amount of loan in installments. Now, when you are getting money in small increments, there is better utilization of that fund. Okay? Rather than you go about uh, getting a large amount of money wherein it could get utilized for things which you don't really want. Right? Now that's a very, very important part of rural credit that you must remember. Okay? To sum it up, rural credit in India to a large part remains unorganized. Okay? Now to curb the unorganized part, government of India has introduced its various schemes. One of the schemes that they've introduced is microfinancing wherein a large amount of loan is given to you in small increments and the interest rate that they need to pay on this is in fact quite less. In fact, if I'm not wrong, in one of the previous Karnataka governments, they even went on to wave away these loans. Wave, wave off a loan is a nice way to say you don't owe us any money anymore. Okay? 
I hope you guys found this concept uh, easier to understand. Remember, this comes for a five mark question. Okay, it could be there in the upcoming exams. So uh, go through this once. It's already there in my notes. Uh, you would know my website by now, uh, vipinmks.com, v-i-p-i-n-m-k-s.com. Alright, thank you. Have a nice day.